1992, the Food and Drug Administration decided that genetically modified organisms were the functional equivalent of conventional foods. They arrived at this decision without testing GMOs for allergenicity, toxicity, antibiotic resistance, and functional characteristics. The aim of the seed industry is a trillion dollars of profits from royalties every year. And the aim is no farmer should have access to their own seed. The aim is every farmer should be forced into the market every year. All across our country, our people are becoming more and more conscious about the foods that they are eating and the foods that they are serving to their kids. And this is certainly true for genetically engineered foods. Americans have a right to know if their food is genetically engineered. Hello and welcome to Mad Science, the Genetic Crossroad. I am your host, Anna Kavanaugh, and I want to thank you for joining me for the broadcast tonight. Contaminating the human code. This is an extremely important topic and one that really cannot be overstated because it is happening right now. In fact, it's been happening in this country since the 1990s when the Food and Drug Administration approved the production and sale of genetically modified foods. The effects of genetic contamination are starting to be seen more and more, confirmed by valid scientific studies, despite the misinformation that is being generated by huge agri-companies like Monsanto. All food contains genetic material that directly affects the normal expression of cells in the body. GM food is counterfeit and artificially manufactured to force unnatural expressions. Dr. Ivan Novotny, who I quote quite often and for very good reason, a spokesperson for Scientists for Global Responsibility said, quote, even minor tampering with nature is apt to bring serious consequences, as did the introduction of a single chemical, DDT. Genetic engineering is tampering on a monumental scale, and nature will surely exact a heavy toll for this trespass, end quote. Will we reach the event horizon and contamination of the human genetic code, ultimately changing what it means to be human? These are serious questions we should be asking, and we should be demanding answers from the GM biotech industry. Now, this is no joke. We've always known it. Grandma always told us about it. But it has recently been scientifically proven that we really are what we eat. It's been proven. All food, whether it be derived from plant crops or animals, is comprised of genetic material. So the DNA making up our food becomes a part of the existing DNA in our bodies. For thousands of years of human history, going back to the beginning, this has been a natural process. But not until recently have our diets been abruptly changed, and not by our own doing. This change was ushered in purposefully and silently by large biotech companies with the sole intent to expand their business model and maximize profits. Activities that have been approved and condoned by the very federal regulatory agencies put in place to protect U.S. consumers like you and me. As a result of these reckless practices, our genetic makeup is now becoming irreversibly contaminated and is evolving on a different trajectory than would be the case if GM technology had not been implemented into our food supply. Think about that. A different trajectory than the one human evolution had been on. We've changed it. And now the question begs to be asked, does evolution still know where it's going? Here's a clip from Andrew Kimbrell, Executive Director of the Center for Food Safety, speaking to the travesty that has taken place due to practices in the biotech industry. Have a listen. And now with genetic engineering, when you see that, you know, without much democratic decision making at all, a few scientists and companies are trying to change the genetic makeup, the permanent genetic makeup of all living things, all those things that we love uh, so dearly, and change them forever in a way we can never get back. Uh, it seems to me the only thing you can do is, is to fight this and to say uh, th th these plants, these animals deserve their genetic integrity. They are things of great beauty. They are things that were made either through divine intervention or millennia and, and millions of years of evolution. We have no right for profit or for research to change them fundamentally. Uh, th they deserve to be loved and protected. Amen. 
Now, although Mr. Kimbrell emphasizes plants and animals in this particular clip, his statements are wholly relevant to what has continued to happen in the genetic engineering field regarding humans. Only within the last two decades has our genetic code been carelessly impacted by the consumption of GM foods. And we are now just beginning to see the full implications of this fact. To put things in perspective, think about this. Basic farming and agricultural practices have been going on for about 10,000 years and have been a large contributing component to natural human evolution. Not until recently has this natural process been derailed by the onset of imposter GM foods. If we were to squeeze that last 10,000 years into the length of a football field, the genetic engineering portion accounts for only half a foot. This is alarming because the GM foods we have been led to believe are completely safe uh, for us to consume are now relatively quickly steering human evolution off course in a direction that is yet to be seen. Considering the epidemic onslaught of allergies, obesity, sterility, and cancer, among other human ailments, it raises the question, by consuming these biotechnology products, are we evolving into something unnatural and possibly even not human? And if so, what are the ramifications? How deep does this rabbit hole go? And what will we look like when we reach the other side? Now, to gain a better appreciation of this, it might be helpful to talk about the human genome, which is the platform where from all human evolution takes place. The human genome encompasses the entire genetic composition of a human being. Every gene that makes us who and what we are, how we look, how we think, what we like or don't like, our personalities and mannerisms, are all generated from this genetic code. In 2003, the Human Genome Project was officially completed. It was a monumental achievement that essentially aimed to map every gene in our DNA. And initially, scientists thought that millions of genes were responsible for our humanness. But as it turned out, there are actually only about 20 to 25,000 genes making up the entire genetic code. It is all incredibly intricate and complex. And some sections of DNA constitute a gene, while other sections act as switches that turn different genes on or off. And there are still discoveries being made as to new gene locations and functions all the time. There are a growing number of scientists who are examining the human genome to zero in on just how we've changed. And their research is helping illuminate not only how humans became what we are, but also where we might be headed. And in these circles, it has become clear that the food we eat directly affects our genetic code. In fact, many foods contain natural gene regulators whose modification could change the entire human genome. For example, researchers from Nanjing University in China recently conducted a study that found gene-altering properties in regular non-GMO rice. And it turns out that certain plant-based foods, or perhaps all of them, contain unique properties that naturally turn genes on or off throughout the body when ingested. So when these properties are altered by genetically modified sequences, the result will be genes turning on or off that may not have been intended to do so. I tell you, friends, this is scary, scary, scary business. One consequence of all this is gene confusion, where genes are unnaturally switched on or off, thereby interfering with natural physiological processes and possibly causing a host of problems that are a detriment to the organism. On a larger scale, this has the potential to place certain cultures in harm's way. It is a known fact that human evolution through millennia has been shaped by certain external environmental conditions, endowing races of people to possess unique genetic strengths, such as resilience to certain diseases specific to a region. Uh, for example, people whose ancestors lived in European cities are more likely to have some resistance to smallpox, while people in sub-Saharan Africa are more likely to be genetically resistant to malaria, but more susceptible to AIDS. Uh, other examples are the Native Americans and Polynesians, whose cultures uh, only recently adopted a European-style diet of refined grains and now have the world's highest rate of diabetes. The point of this is that our genetic makeup is flexible and sensitive to our environments. It has evolved naturally to allow humans to adapt and cope with the challenges unique to their region. 
by contaminating the human genetic code through ingestion of GM foods, we are inadvertently reprogramming what has taken thousands of years to evolve. Our DNA is being morphed into a form which could make a general population more susceptible to diseases, health anomalies, or other problems that are not normal afflictions. So a natural evolutionary process that has developed through time, functioning as a protection, is now being thwarted by the contamination and manipulation of our genetic code through GM food consumption. And what about other health conditions attributed to this? Consider the connection between GM foods and autism, for example. It is so incredibly disturbing to see that in the mid to late 1990s, the United States experienced a dramatic increase in children born with this condition. It also happens to coincide exactly with the large-scale introduction of genetically modified organisms into our food supply. The fact is the United States has the highest rate of autism in the world and also happens to be the leading producer and consumer of GM crops by far. So should we be surprised? A comparison study conducted with other countries that do not consume GM foods has shown autism to occur with much lower frequency. For example, France was four times lower than the U.S. and Iceland was found to be seven times lower. There are also other disorders which have been on the rise since the introduction of GM foods. For example, there has been a huge increase in severity in allergic reactions, asthma, gastrointestinal disorders, and debilitating syndromes like chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. According to a 2010 study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, the rate of chronic health conditions among children in the United States increased from 13% in 1994 to 27% in 2006, particularly for asthma, obesity, and behavior and learning problems. That's more than double in the span of just over a decade. And it's curious to point out that pets, whose food also contains GMO, experienced similar notable increases in allergy complications correlating to the same time period. Is this just a coincidence? And even still, with all of this, considering the proven risks and outcomes of genetic contamination on humans, big biotech corporations forge ahead with new and inventive ways to alter our genes and just ignore the potential hazards that await us. For instance, pharmaceutical companies have been focusing on how best to crack the genetic code with the intent to manipulate the way genes inherently express themselves. And some of these companies have been working on proprietary gene silencing technologies that can be applied to agricultural pursuits and have already drawn heavy interest from biotech giant Monsanto. In a nutshell, this new technology uses something that's called RNA interference, which involves deliberately silencing the expression of genes throughout the body for the purpose of preventing the production of proteins that are believed to be responsible for causing disease. By artificially blocking production of these proteins, it is believed that we have the potential to effectively block the development of disease. Now, on the surface, that might sound great, but here's what we're talking about, folks. Monsanto has invested nearly $30 million in this technology and plans to use it by rolling out all sorts of new genetically modified crops, which have the effect of mimicking drugs. And this is a significant development, and it's worth distinguishing that so far, Monsanto has focused its GM applications to gene expressions in plants, for instance, herbicide-resistant or pesticide-producing crops. But this new technology, what we're talking about here, this new technology targets gene expressions in those who consume the GM crops. And that is a very different ballgame. As an example of this, many modern varieties of wheat produce unnaturally high levels of gluten, which is a problem for many people with gluten sensitivity, and we're seeing that more and more. By integrating this gene silencing technology, it's possible to theoretically produce a GM wheat variety that does not contain any gluten at all, which Monsanto could then market as the solution to gluten sensitivity. But experimental gene tampering in this area is already taking place elsewhere, and it's proving to be a complete failure. In Australia, for example, field trials of a novel variety of GM wheat has been completely disastrous, as the modified gene expressions in the wheat are also modifying human genes in the liver. 
clearly the intended effects are being overshadowed by other unanticipated gene expressions, which are not only dangerous to human health, but potentially irreversible as well. Have a listen to this clip with Dr. David Suzuki, who's a well-known zoologist and science expert, posing the question to the biotech industry as to why there is such a push to rush untested biotech foods and products to the consumer without proper testing. This is an excellent point that highlights the extreme lack of common sense and concern for the public safety perpetrated by mega biotech corporations and their political bedfellows. Have a listen. In any revolutionary area, and biotechnology is a revolutionary area, most of our current ideas are wrong. Then I ask you, what the hell is the rush to apply these ideas that we're getting? We're still at the bare beginning of understanding of what we're doing. The rush to apply these ideas is absolutely dangerous because we don't have a clue what the long-term impact of our manipulations is going to be. Well, unfortunately, we already know the answer to Dr. Suzuki's question. Regardless of the risks involved, Monsanto and others have consistently put profit before safety as they hurry new GM products to market. And it appears there is not much forethought given to the potential dangers involved with this practice or how it could affect us. Intentionally altering the functions of genes through GM crops could result in disastrous and unexpected consequences, potentially throwing the entire human genome off balance. In other words, Monsanto's latest research involves genetically altering plants at their most elemental level, which will in turn alter humans at their most elemental level as well. Uh, Sure, Monsanto has been inserting, removing, and splicing the genes of plants for decades. But these new gene technologies involve essentially reprogramming the way genes do or don't express themselves. Reprogramming human gene expression. Reprogramming our genetic code. This is uncharted territory, folks, and very, very scary. We should be more than extremely concerned. We should be terrified. And we should be outraged that it is going on with no regulation. Now, this brings me to another disturbing aspect about this topic. It has to do with the fact that after consuming GM products, it's not so simple to just cleanse ourselves of them. They remain inside ourselves as a part of us. Take GM corn and cotton, which are engineered to contain a built-in pesticide in every cell. When bugs bite a GM plant, they ingest the poison, which acts to split open their stomach and kill them. Biotech companies justify making a GM plant produce its own pesticide by claiming that organic farmers and others have used the same pesticide for years without adverse effects, therefore making it equivalent and safe. However, Organic farmers spray the pesticide topically onto their crops, whereas GM plants produce it internally at a higher concentration, and it cannot be washed off. That's a significant difference, which brings me to the point. When we ingest foods containing corn, soy, or other GM crops, we are ingesting the same built-in pesticide they are making to produce in the field. And this same genetic information then transfers into the DNA of bacteria living inside our intestines, where it continues to function. So even after we stop eating GM products, we may still have potentially harmful proteins being produced continuously inside of us. Put simply, eating a corn chip produced from GM corn works to transform our intestinal bacteria into a living pesticide factory and remains there for the rest of our lives. There is indeed mounting evidence that the effects of GM food consumption is impacting us more than we may realize. We should pay attention when doctors respond at medical conferences around the United States, citing huge increases in gastrointestinal problems among their patients. In fact, studies done on gastrointestinal disease in the U.S. alone found that there has been a substantial 237% increase in hospitalizations since the late 1990s due to GI-related illnesses, which include colon, liver, and pancreatic cancers. A 237% increase. 
World-renowned biologist Pushpa Bhargava goes one step further, concluding, after reviewing more than 600 scientific journals, that, quote, GM foods are a major contributor to the sharply deteriorating health of Americans, end quote. That really says it all, doesn't it? That's what we're talking about here. And that is what is so incredibly frightening. It seems clear that GM food consumption is a smoking gun, showing a marked increase in ailments correlating to when they were first introduced in the 1990s. However, the effects of GM foods may be responsible for a broader scope of health issues than we know. The problem is that many diseases take a long time to develop and therefore make them difficult to trace back to how they began. If specific genetic modifications happen to cause immediate and acute symptoms with a unique signature, perhaps then we might have a chance to trace the cause. Something like this actually happened during a U.S. epidemic in the late 1980s. A new disease suddenly afflicted thousands of people, causing a unique measurable change in the blood. But it still took more than four years to identify that an epidemic was even occurring. And by then, it had killed about 100 Americans and caused many more people to fall sick or become permanently disabled. The affliction was fortunately traceable in this case and found to be caused by a genetically engineered brand of a food supplement called L-tryptophan. But this was an exceptional case. Many serious health issues and diseases are complex and develop by ways that are not obvious or traceable. The point here is that we should keep our eye on the big picture and use common sense when looking at the data available to us so as to make better decisions for ourselves and for future generations. This unfortunately runs counter to the interests and motivations of biotech companies like Monsanto, who are steadily gaining more control over our food supply and justifying it with faulty or skewed studies intentionally misinforming the public with claims of safety, equivalence, and positive benefits. Genetically modified food consumption is, without doubt, changing human DNA and gene expressions in unnatural and unhealthy ways. Besides threatening our present health, these changes are also threatening our future evolution and viability as a species. In a broader sense, scientists are now discovering that DNA can be passed sideways to other humans, as well as downwards to future generations. This means that our evolution can be affected not only by what we inherit from our ancestors, but also by those around us who are not related. There is much study going on concerning this sideway effect, which is commonly referred to as horizontal or lateral gene transfer, and it describes an organism transferring its genetic material to an organism other than its own offspring, including transfers from one species to another. For example, scientists have conclusively found that a blood-sucking insect can pass DNA to the host it bites, while also taking DNA from it, meaning that genetically modified DNA can actually be transferred into us through insects or even by exposure to certain toxins and other agents. Remember the effects of Monsanto's defoliant, Agent Orange. Those directly exposed to it were not only affected themselves, but so were their offspring as well. The evidence now shows that the process of human evolution is much more complex than even previously thought, compounded by the fact that genetic information is not only inherited from our ancestors, but also from other sources not even related to us. This is so disturbing, because genetic contamination has several modes of propagation, more than we originally thought, and therefore is poised to impact us in more profound ways than we ever could have imagined. And I know that a lot of this sounds science fiction, but it's not. It's real. It's happening. It's happening right now. The research and documentation of our declining health and future viability as a species should be a huge wake-up call for all humanity. We are near the event horizon, the point of no return. In fact, it may already be too late for our current generation or even those to come. The human genome is being unnaturally altered due to the reckless and irresponsible actions of giant biotech corporations who are allowed to continue in their push for more profit and market share by governmental agencies seeming to operate without common sense or conscience. They are not slowing down as they introduce more and more GM products for our consumption. They are a freight train out of control, and who is there to stop them? As they continue to aggressively spread GM technology throughout the world, along with their advertised feel-good mission to improve humanity, 
They are ironically robbing humanity of everything they promise and more. In our times, there is no bigger issue at hand, folks. This is a human crisis of epic proportion. So understand what this all means. Mankind has been evolving at its own pace and on its own course by either natural or divine direction. And we, in the last 60 years, have changed the trajectory of our human evolution, changed what it means to be human. So the road we have been to, wherever it was meant to go, we've changed. And we're on a different journey now. And who decided that for us? Who changed the course of human history? of evolution, of your DNA, of your children's future. Maybe about a hundred people on this planet, if that. People who run chemical corporations and political machinery. They changed it for all of us. Forever. And that's a fact. We'll leave it there on that heavy note as we move on to a special segment of the program called The Listener's Voice, which is where folks out there have kindly taken the time to write into the website with their questions and comments. And to close each show of the program, we'll go through as many as we can. This evening, we'll start with Tina. Tina Roy writes into the show and says, Hi, Anna. I love your show, and I'm learning so much. I was hoping I could ask you a question. I am very health conscious, watch my weight, exercise, and stay away from fried, sugary, bad foods. I buy fat-free everything and sugar-free or diet products like hard candies that I love, soda, and crystal light drinks of some favorites to give me variety in flavors. I just heard that the stuff in diet products is GMO. I think it's called aspartame. If that's true, I would be so upset because I've made healthy living living a way of life and thought I was doing everything right. I've always told people that I'm able to eat a non-GMO diet with no problems. Have I been wrong all this time? Help. Well, hi, Tina. And and first of all, let me just applaud you for making your health such a priority. Uh, you know, it does take a lot of effort to make consistently healthy food choices and still manage to somehow keep a little variety in your life. Uh, I, I've got some bad news for you, uh, and it's going to hurt. It, it hurt me when I found out. Uh, I was a chronic Crystal Light uh, drinker myself, but aspartame? It's GMO. In fact, it used to be solely produced by Monsanto. It's in everything. And, you know, that's right. Just about every product that is diet or sugar free or labeled light is made with aspartame. Now, recently, more and more products are using Splenda, which is sucralose, uh, but Splenda has its own problems. Uh, But aspartame is still really the king of the diet industry. Uh, and also, you know, for all the listeners, I, I, I want to tell you that, that when you're reading those labels and a, and a product's label shows sugar as an ingredient, that is more than likely GMO because it's most of that that's, that's made from sugar beet. So what you want to look for, and it's tough to find, but you want those labels to say cane sugar and not simply just sugar and definitely stay away from corn syrup. But I don't want to get too far off track from your question, Tina. It's really tough to live a life where you're restricting calories and those diet products that you're buying are so helpful, you know, for you in doing that. A lot of dieters use Jello, you know, you know, diet Jello, and that's all made with aspartame. Alternatives are sort of slim, Tina, but they are out there. Uh, Sorry to bring you the bad news, but get online, do some research and and maybe do a little risk taking by trying out some new types of products and and find out what you can live with. And, um, you know, if you find some things that, that you think are great, be sure to let me know and I'll pass them, pass them along to my listeners. Okay, thanks for writing into the show. And next up, we have Aaron uh, Nieschweitz, I believe. Uh, Aaron writes into the show and says, Hey, Anna, what about what we feed our animals? Are these GMOs in cat and dog food? Hi, Aaron. That is a great question. I actually mentioned something about that earlier in the show. Um, but this is really something else for folks to think about. Unless your pet food has the USDA organic label on it, it's likely GMO. Uh, cat and dog foods are made with the two top ingredients being corn and soy. And uh, frankly, you know, pet food is a scary, scary subject anyway, uh, to be honest. But, uh, but anyway, a lot of those fillers that are derived from corn and soy can cause our critters a, a lot of problems. Uh, but yes, on the GMO issue alone, most pet foods do contain them and our pets do experience the same types of negative impacts that we do. So look for those organic labels if you can. Um, organic pet food you know, sure can be very expensive. Um, but that is what we need to look for if we're going to put uh, Fido's health first. Um, great question. Thanks for writing into the show. 
And next up, we have Kelly uh, McNear. Uh, Kelly writes in and says, first, I just want to thank you for all your hard work in bringing us your radio show and for giving out information in a way that's easy to understand uh, what's going on with Monsanto and GMOs. This may sound like a really silly question, but are GMOs only in food or are they in medicine too? Thank you very much. I hope you will answer my question on your show. Well, hi, Kelly. Thank you so much for your kind words about the show. Uh, boy, I tell you, I feel like the bearer of bad news this evening. Um, I'm sorry to say that, yes, GMOs are not just uh, a food issue, even though that's what we focus on most of the time. And that's what gets the most attention in the press. But the sad truth is GMO is just about everywhere. And let me give you some examples of that so you can be informed the next time uh, you're out and about picking up products. When it comes to medicine, first of all, there, there's actually a term for this when, when dealing with medicine. It's called farming. And that's farming spelled with a PH, as in pharmaceutical. And that includes insulin, uh, spermicidal antibodies, several vaccines for cholera, anthrax, plague, influenza, hepatitis C, lymphoma, uh, and others. Uh, other medications as, uh, as well contain GMO. And on the, the shelf, those uh, sweet cough syrups and drops that we get, GMO. If it says corn syrup on the label, that's what we're getting. Uh, but it, it's not just medicine, Kelly. It's, it's in skin lotions, hand sanitizers, shampoos and conditioners, the ink, the, uh, the ink that we pick up on our hands from newspapers and magazines. Well, that ink is made of soy, which is GMO. And even your clothes. 93% of the cotton planted in the U.S. in 2010 was GM cotton. And we absorb 60% of what our skin comes in contact with. So we're not just getting this from foods. The answer, well, it's not easy. Uh, but again, it does come down to organic. Now, there are a lot of companies and more and more every day selling organic products as demand is increasing. Uh, not all medicines have GMO in them, but many do. And uh, when it comes to those, there's really just not much we can do about that. Uh, but with everyday products, there are organic lines of lotions and cosmetic ma makeup and, and all of that. But it's scary. It's really, really scary. Uh, so again, I want to thank you for your question, because this is something everyone really needs to be aware of uh, and, and conscious of as, as they do their shopping. So thanks for writing into the show. And with that, I've run out of time in the segment. If you would like your question or comment to be featured on the show, I'd love to hear from you. Just pay a visit to the website at www.geneticcrossroadradio.com and follow the link to the listener's voice. Once there, fill in the form and send me along your thoughts. I will feature as many as I can during each broadcast. Your voice really does matter, and it will help make a difference in both the future of our food and our human health. The show is a conversation, and that's where all change begins. So let's Let's get talking. And I also just want to remind you about the new Facebook page for the series. If you are enjoying the show and would like to participate in some more interactive communication, I'd love for you to come and give us a like at www.facebook.com slash Anna Kavanaugh Mad Science Genetic Crossroad. Uh, and I hope to see you there. And I want to thank uh, all those who've already come along. We definitely have a lot to talk about. Thank you for listening to Mad Science, The Genetic Crossroad. Please join me every Tuesday for more on GMO. On next week's show, that's Tuesday, February 26th, we'll continue our conversation with an episode named A Simple Game of Risk. Would you subject yourself or your children to be participants in a potentially harmful game? Well, consumers are unwittingly already part of a game we don't even know we're a part of. Who has the right to determine what is an acceptable risk? The GM industry is playing with our lives and making self-serving and profit-based decisions about our safety, our health, and our evolution. Their game of risk is not as simple as they would have us believe, and we aren't as much players as we are pawns. I hope you'll join me next week for more. If we destroy nature, surely nature will destroy us. For while we may hold dominion over nature, we do not possess its wisdom. Until next time, be well, be healthy, and be informed. <laughs>